Hello, this is Pastor Rick, and I want to welcome you to the Lectionary Bible Study for this Sunday, August the 7th. The first thing I have to say is, although I'm going to do the Lectionary Bible Study, uh, we're expecting Pastor Steve. He will be preaching on Sunday. He's just under the weather right now. We want to keep him in our prayers. Uh, and so I'm going to do the Lectionary Bible Study, but he will be preaching on Sunday. We have three... Uh, wonderful texts, actually very familiar texts. Genesis 15, this initial call of Abram. He's not Abraham yet. Uh, Hebrews 11, uh, th which defines faith. And Luke 12, a continuation of this story about the kingdom from last week. Before we dive into those texts, uh, please join me in a word of prayer. Lord, as we watch this film and as we dive into these texts, we pray that you would Touch our hearts once again with the wisdom of your Holy Spirit so that we would read them and understand them and be able to apply them to our lives. And we pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's jump into Genesis 15. And we want to do this by encouraging you to read this story within the whole arc of the biblical story, especially in Genesis. It's just helpful sometimes not just to read the six verses, but to think about, okay, how do these six verses fit into the larger storyline? Because we have Adam and Eve, right, and the fall. And after the fall, after they're kicked out of the garden, God tries again, right, with Noah. Now, this time he's going to try to, after the flood, build a, a family, which can be a blessing to the whole earth. And that fails with Noah, and that brings us to chapter 12 in Genesis, where now God is going to call Abram to start a nation, a holy nation that can be a blessing to all the nations of the earth. Okay, that's the large arc of the story. And so history, the history of Israel, starts with Abram chapter 12, and our text is just a few chapters afterwards in 15. And here Abram says, God, I'm a little frustrated because I want an heir. I, I still don't have any children. And take a look at Sarai. She's not Sarah yet. She's Sarah, my wife. Right? He's getting a bit desperate. And he actually says in this text, right now, if I were to die, all my inheritance, all that I own, would all go to my slave, and that's unacceptable to me. Interestingly, uh, God says, I get it. Don't worry. I will then bless you with your own inheritance, with your own children. And this is the beautiful scene where God takes Abram outside, and they just look at the stars in heaven. And we can imagine that here in Naples. How many evenings do you go out and it's just crystal clear and there are all the stars in the sky and you just look up and you're, well, amazed? Well, God says, look at all the stars, so shall your inheritance be. What a great blessing. Okay, now don't stop. Keep reading because the story continues. It's a little sad, actually, because after this great problem, a promise and all the stars Guess what's the first thing Abram does? He sleeps with his wife's servant, Hagar. And so immediately after receiving the blessing, the promise of God, you will have children through your own seed, through Sarah, uh, he wanders off to the servant woman. So that's all part of the story, though, to be thinking of when we read this on Sunday uh, although we'll only read uh, verses 1 through 6. Okay, skip now to 11. Because 11 is going to talk about faith and going to connect us back to Genesis. Because Abram and Abraham later on is the example of faith. And that's important because Abraham comes before Moses. In other words, faith comes before the need of law. That's an important theological principle that Paul will use later on. And here, Hebrews 11 defines faith, that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. 
What a beautiful definition. Again, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things, things not seen. And when you read this in your Bibles, notice they skip some verses now in our reading. They skip verses 4 to 7, which is a listing of the pagan saints. That's their official title, the pagan saints. Those who come before Abraham, before Abraham's reliance on the promises of God, uh, but nevertheless, they're considered saints because of their faithfulness. We're talking about Abel and Enoch and Noah. They're all listed there in chapter 11, but we, we skip them this week and we move on then to the end of the story where it talks about Abraham and Sarah and how they depend on the promises of God despite the fact, and the text says this, it's kind of humorous, that they were actually close to death. Now, when the text says that, it's not talking about their physical health. It's, it's talking about their reproductive abilities. And here they are old. They had sort of given up. But the text says they trusted in God's promise. We remember again the stars of Genesis. And they're blessed with children. All right. Now we go to Luke 12, which is a continuation of the stories from last week. Now, just to remember, we had the parable of the rich fool. Remember, the person who took down their barns, built up bigger barns, which was okay until he said, soul, now you can relax, eat, drink, and be merry. In other words, I don't need God for my security or my success. God says, fool. Now it's talking about the kingdom because he encouraged last week us to invest, if you remember, to lay up treasures in heaven. Well, now we're going to talk about heaven in terms of the kingdom. And here in verse 22, it's a wonderful promise. It says, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. This is important. It's not like we have to try to achieve the kingdom. Here God says, I just want to give it to you. And sometimes we think, oh, I got to lay up treasures in heaven. How do I do that? Here Jesus turns around and says, I'm going to give you again heaven in a, in a sense. I'm going to give you the kingdom. This is the gift I want to give. He then goes on to say, this is something you can memorize for Sunday, all right? That's your, that's your homework. For where your treasure is, you remember this verse? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Where your treasure is, like a magnet, it will draw your heart to that area. And so the question obviously is, where's your treasure? Today, where is your treasure? He then gives two examples about how we're to be prepared for this kingdom. We're to have our lamps lit, again, using the wedding banquet. Uh, we know that story about you just wait for the bride and the bridegroom. You don't know when they're going to come. You don't know when they're going to come, but you have to have your lamps lit or you won't be let into the feast. That's the first example. And the second then is a thief. If you knew when the thief was going to come and break into your house, of course you'd be ready. But we don't. And so here Jesus says, be prepared, because you will not know when the Son of Man will come in judgment. Beautiful text again, Genesis 15 about Abram, uh, Hebrews 11 about defining faith, and Luke 12 continuing to talk to us about laying up our treasures. And again, remember where your treasure is, there's where your heart will be also. Thanks for joining us for the lectionary Bible study. Bye-bye now.